This story, perhaps more so than any other, really demonstrates how little respect the Democratic Party establishment has for its progressive members. Now, this isn't surprising to anyone on the left if you've been paying attention, but this story in particular is so egregious that even some centrists are looking at it and they're saying, okay, this is a little bit too far. So the DCCC is the campaign arm of the Democratic Party, and this organization has one goal. The chair of the DCCC, Sean Maloney, has one goal, literally. It's to get incumbent Democrats reelected. That's what he's paid for. But this individual is so craven that he has announced that he's going to try to sink the career of of one of the members who he is literally supposed to be protecting. So as Kenny Stansel of Common Dreams explains, Representative Sean Maloney, the leader of House Democrats' campaign arm tasked with protecting incumbents, has come under fire this week after declaring his intention to run against first-term progressive Representative Mondaire Jones in a newly redrawn New York congressional district, a move that critics have slammed as cowardly and potentially harmful to the party's efforts to keep control of Congress. Maloney, chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, announced his plan to mount a primary challenge against Jones less than an hour after a New York court released a draft of the state's new congressional districts, which are expected to be made official on Friday. Despite the fact that Jones currently represents three-quarters of the 17th district, Maloney's decision to run against the incumbent in New York's August 23rd primary received the blessing of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and some other high-ranking Democrats. The 17th district, which President Joe Biden won by 10 points in 2020, is slightly more friendly to Democrats than the 18th district, which he won by eight points, and where many commentators believe Maloney should run for re-election instead. After being blindsided by Maloney's announcement, Jones' only viable options, assuming New York's draft redistricting plan hasn't been significantly revised, are to take on the DCCC chair or challenge fellow first-term progressive representative Jamal Bowman in the 16th district. So this is absolutely outrageous. And just note how eager members of the Democratic Party's leadership are to get rid of of progressive members of Congress. It's absolutely insane. Everyone in unison should be condemning this, but Nancy Pelosi gave him the blessing. The job of Sean Maloney is to protect incumbents, and he's going to take on one of the incumbents who he should be protecting, and in doing so may jeopardize the Democratic Party's control of Congress, and Nancy Pelosi is like, that's fine. I give you the green light. And meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi is campaigning for an anti-abortion incumbent over a progressive woman who's challenging him, Jessica Cisneros. I mean, the Democratic Party establishment, I mean, they deserve nobody's respect. They spit in our faces constantly, and then they expect you to support them monetarily when this is not okay. Now, if Sean Maloney, uh, Sean Maloney did do this, he would have a massive advantage as the chair of the DCCC. He controls the party's cash. He controls the data, the infrastructure. I mean, he could do anything he wanted to easily crush Mondaire Jones. And Mondaire Jones, if he wants to keep his job in Congress, his only option is to run against his colleague in a neighboring district who's also progressive, basically ideologically indistinguishable. And in the event Mondaire Jones decided to do that, then what would happen is a conservative Democrat might win and we might lose two progressives because Jamal Bowman currently himself is already facing a primary challenge against a right-wing Democrat. So in the event Mondaire Jones enters that race and progressives split the votes, then that could lead to this right-wing Democrat reaching a plurality and then we knock out two progressives. It's a nightmare situation. But I mean, of course, that's why the Democratic Party uh, leadership wants this to happen because they want to get rid of progressives. They're a thorn in the side of the Democratic Party establishment. Even if progressives try to do whatever they can to appease you, go along with what you want, bow down to you, it's still not good enough. They want them gone. It's ridiculous. Now, progressives, as a result of this, are going to try to oust Sean Maloney. The problem is that if you have the Speaker of the House's blessing, you're not going to be able to do that. So what they're doing instead of just ousting him, him is launching a pressure campaign. For example, uh, AOC is calling on him to step down if he's going to do this primary because you can't be in this position of power where you control the campaign arm of the party 
and then compete in this primary. It's completely unfair. It's a conflict of interest. So as Heather Cagle of Punchbowl News explains, Representative AOC tells me she'll demand Representative Sean Maloney to step down as DCCC chair if he runs against a fellow Dem. I don't think he should be the DCCC chair if he's going to challenge another member. It's completely inappropriate. And she's exactly right. I mean, the Democratic Party has not learned. Back in 2016, they had Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was a former campaign co-chair of Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign, and then she was the DCCC or the DNC head in 2016, and that was an obvious conflict of interest. And then we later learned that internally she was trying to sabotage anyone who wasn't Hillary Clinton in that race. And so here we have a Democratic Party power broker who's trying to launch this primary campaign against someone, and he's expecting to do this while still in that position. And Nancy Pelosi has given him her blessing. I mean, this is outrageous. Now, it's so bad that even some centrist Democrats are calling this out. For example, Richie Torres, who is no progressive, is denouncing this, saying the thinly veiled racism here is profoundly disappointing. A black man is ideologically ill-suited to represent a Westchester County district that he represents presently and one district decisively in 2020 outrageous he added there's a simple solution here maloney should run in new york 18 which he mostly represents jones in new york 17 which he mostly represents bowman in new york 16 which he mostly represents problem solved yeah he's absolutely correct about that i don't agree with richie torres on many things but you know uh credit where it's due he's absolutely right about this and i commend him for speaking out this is not acceptable and it's not like if representative maloney chose to rerun in the district that he's already representing i mean it's slightly different but even if he did rerun he's still overwhelmingly the favorite it's just that he'd have an easier time winning in a general election in the 17th congressional district which is why he's willing to take out another member of congress potentially two progressive members of congress just so he has a little bit easier of a job i mean what happened to actually trying to compete and win voters over sure this is a slightly new district but it's still overwhelmingly your district i mean can you not convince them with policy it's just absurd. Now, I do want to get to some more reactions here because I think that everyone is rightfully upset about this. Indivisible's Ezra Levin writes two words for this, cowardice, hypocrisy. Maloney's job is to help Dems win tough seats. He's now abandoning his own district to run against a fellow Democrat in a safer district. Maloney is running from a fight he's supposed to be leading. Embarrassing, disgraceful behavior. David Nur of the Daily Cost writes, assuming the map is finalized as is, Jones would represent three times as much of New York 17 as Maloney. He's also vastly more progressive than Sean Patrick Maloney, one of the most centrist Dems in the House. Jones even had more cash on hand than Maloney as of March 31st, 2.9 million versus 2.1 million. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing left to say. This is completely unacceptable. And again, it shows you how much they hate the left. And this isn't the only example. I mean, in uh, Buffalo, New York, India Walton literally defeated the incumbent Democrat in a primary. And what did he do? He decided to launch a sore loser right in campaign. He then picked up right wing donors and then he beat her because he brought in more money. This is what happens. I mean, how many high profile Democrats spoke out against that? Uh, this is this is what happens time and time Again, the, the Democratic Party is fundamentally corrupt and broken to its core, and nothing will ever change so long as leadership as it is remains in charge. And if you don't like Nancy Pelosi, well, got bad news for you. The next person to uh, succeed her, Steny Hoyer, Jim Clyburn, they're as bad, if not worse, if we're talking about Steny Hoyer. So, I mean, there's no, uh, there's going to be no change in leadership for the foreseeable future. So this is what the left has to look forward to. And as a result, the Democratic Party is going to wonder why they're hemorrhaging support, why the left and young people just don't want to support them. It's because of things like this. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.